Let's get it on. I right, y'all, fly eagles, fly. Your boy is beaming from ear to ear because my man Howie Roseman done done it again, right? For lack of a better term, a man keeps housing free agency completely masterclassing everybody out there, showing them how it's done, showing them that the salary cap is a myth. There are only a few GMs out there that are like that. My man in New Orleans, Mickey Loomis. That dude knows that the salary cap is a myth. At least he makes it seem that way. Uh, the cat out in Seattle, uh, he does a very good job. Uh, you know the Patriots, what they do there. But, man, you can't say nobody better than Howie Roseman, right? Eric DaCosta from the Baltimore Ravens, right there with my man Howie Roseman as well. Nobody better, right? He just seems to every year make some shit happen just like you would want it to happen, right? Listen, we know that offense next year is going to be off the chain. It's going to be that much better with A.J. Brown having an offseason. Um, a full offseason with my man Jalen Hurts is going to destroy the league once again uh, with Devontae Smith. They get a wide receiver three. See them getting someone like that in the draft. Imagine what it could be then, all right, with Dallas Goddard and these guys out here at the tight end position. I think the offensive line is going to be straight, right? Veterans coming back in Kelsey and Lane Johnson. We'll see how they – I uh, react with, you know what I'm saying, my man Jurgens uh, getting in there. But for the most part, we know it's going to be business as usual. Dominate from the line of scrimmage. That's Philadelphia Eagles football, baby. You, know, you already know that, right? On the other hand, right, the defense. <laughs> the demise was greatly exaggerated. Howie Roseman did work. Definitely looking to run it back with a lot of the chief characters last year, re-signing BG, re-signing Fletcher Cox. Uh, Darius Slay and James Bradbury when people said that most of them dudes, if not all of them, were out the door, right? 86. Not necessarily. And you come back with the Morrow signing and a Justin Evans. These are two guys that I think could add depth perhaps, right? Maybe one of them is a frontline guy, but you're still looking at draft, pairing a guy up with N'Kobe Dean, seeing what else is out there from there with Morrow. Uh, you get some guys out there, but I would be remiss, right, if I didn't talk about my boy. Real quickly, Terrell Edmonds, right? My man Terrell Edmonds is the absolute truth, in my opinion, right? And this is right. This might be a biased opinion. Everybody knows I'm a diehard Penn State fan. But if I have a cousin team, most of you out there know, obviously, it's the Virginia Tech Hokies. Love me some Hokies. I used to live in southwest Virginia, so I got mad love for the Hokies there. That man, I saw his entire career right I know his skill set like the back of my hand I feel like him and the Sean Desai defense Sean Desai very multiplistic in his approach back right back when he last had a defense it was a 3-4 base defense an eye front defense uh, with a balanced shell on the back end he could fit that to a T right a balanced shell straight up he's not a post safety you don't want him back deep by himself posting up you want him either in a balanced shell but you want him in a rotational purposes where you have a big nickel where he can be dropped in in the box, right, from linebacker depth with no gap responsibilities and just have him doing work out there, right, whether it be covering tight ends, assisting in, ru in the rushing department, which we need, right, rushing defense was a little suspect last year, passing defense was off the chain, you don't have to worry about that. It's going to be the same again there. But having him affect and impact the run? Come on, man. Terrell Edmonds was built for that. 6'1", 220 pounds. The guy's a freak athlete. 4'4", four, four speed. Man, matter of fact, man, let's look at some of this right here. All right, this is what I want to see from Terrell Edmonds here. My man, coming at linebacker depth. Fill and spill or squeezing. Straight up. You see him, right? Roaming to the edge. Right? Right at linebacker depth. Look at him. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at him shoot the gap. Come on. Squeeze right down the line of scrimmage. I want you to take note of this, right? If any of you guys out there watching who are still playing, right? Look at his first couple of steps. Very much like a linebacker with the shuffle. Staying parallel to the line of scrimmage, right? I'll tell you this. When he was first at Virginia Tech, he was actually a linebacker. He was moved to safety, I believe, is maybe a sophomore year or something like that. But he was originally a linebacker, and he pretty much played linebacker next to his uh, little brother, his little big, little bigger brother, right? Tremaine Edmonds, if you know him, uh, was playing with the Bills. Uh, <laughs> that dude is the truth. But you see right there, man, with the first couple of steps, and once he gets a beat on what's going on right here with this, what is this, a counter play? Yep, with this counter play right here, Look at him shoot the gap. Man. 
Oh, gets himself a tackle for loss on Leonard Fournette there. That's when he's at his best. So here he is right here. I want you to watch him, right? He's going to dip back, and then he's going to run the median right here and get himself another solo tackle here on Leonard Fournette. Watch, right? He's about to get the safety death. Notice it comes downhill, and he's usually a short tackler. Look at that right there. Right? Shoot the median on him. Coming straight downhill. You got a, a good job being done right here by the cornerback. By keeping outside contained, funnel it right to him, allow him to do what he does best. Make those tackles in the open field there, right? Think about the lineage of we've had at safety, man. When I was a little kid, man, I, I love Andre Waters. That too was the truth. And I love me some Brian Dawkins. Me, Dog, we know he was the absolute truth. Malcolm Jenkins, right? I'm not saying Terrell Edmonds is in that vein, but I think he could show himself to play beyond this one year deal here and show himself to be very impactful with stuff like this. Now look at this, to kind of run that median, nada. Absolutely nada. Being able to allow him to diagnose, react and execute right there. Absolutely perfect. I want you to check him out right here. Man coverage on Chris Godwin. Watch him set the edge. Oh, splat. Tie out, right? He's blocking tie out Chris Godwin, right? Who was trying to check him off, right? Bang, met him, right? Popped his head out the top like Jack in the Box. Had to stand your ground law right there. He didn't go anywhere. Leonard Fournette has to get it back inside. That's exactly what you want. And look at him getting in on the action right there. Oh, he's very sound in his technique, and you can tell his time at linebacker. I uh, was really paying dividends in that particular aspect of his game. All right, you see it right here, balance shell. And then you'll see him, of course, running that median right here, getting in on the action. Right there, look at him, diagnose. Then look at him get downhill. Oh, giving Leonard Fournette the business, right? Giving him the absolute business right here. Your man on his screen pass right there. He diagnosed it. You can see him right there. Linebacker did a good job of holding him up. And then Edmonds there for the finish. The old wrestling tag team. Here we go right here. Screen pass. See him getting downhill. Get him. That's exactly how I want to see him use the majority of time, right? Coverage, right? I, I wanted to come back, right, and get in on some of the coverage aspects a little bit later there and really see what they do in a the draft there before really placing these guys in the positions where we think they'll be. Now, his coverage could use a little bit of work there, right? Especially if we're talking about him covering receivers, him covering tight ends. I think uh, he does pretty good on tight ends there. He could be a little bit better in that aspect as well, but I think he'll compete. And uh, I think that he'll get some really good coaching here in Philadelphia with that as well. But him acting alongside some of the guys on the second level, dropped in that linebacker depth, as you see right there, approaching the line of scrimmage, it shouldn't be nothing for him to do that. That should be off the chain, man. So if you're in the Delaware Valley, baby, stand on up. You already know how we do, baby. Roll call that bad boy for me. Of course, Violent Stand Up, Millville. My beloved Atlantic City, the entire Philadelphia, Newark, Delaware, uh, Christiana, of course, Wilmington. We all in there, all in the building, baby. Reading, PA, right? oh, Trenton, everybody out here, baby. So I think it's going to be another special year there. But I just want to kind of, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to do something on my boy right here. I ain't going to lie, right? So I'll come back a little bit later. And uh, we can really start to try to figure out this draft, right? It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic, right there, right? And um, yeah, some definitely some some good shit going on right there, man. I'm very excited about that tenth pick to see what's going on right there. All right, it's your boy Mid Atlantic Murph, aka Jersey Murph. I'm in the building, baby. Salute, and as always, thank you for the support. Make sure you tip your way there. I'll be giving that hibachi, and of course, salute. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.